for another apology where James doesn't actually address this issue. I'm going to take a dab. Oh, good. I haven't watched it yet. For those of you uninitiated, if you've ju- if you've missed all the all the tea, uh, James Summerton used to be a YouTuber that made like uh, we'll say made uh, for the sake of this, uh, produced, uh, uh, uploaded sort of video essays about different uh, typically queer topics um, re- revolving around uh, you know media, movies, TV shows, stuff like that. It was all plagiarized. Uh, like pretty much all of it. A video came out by H Bomber guy, and uh, H Bomber guy. I've, I mean, I guess I can look it up. I guess I can go look it up. We'll go look at an H Bomb video real quick. It's going to be plagiarism and YouTube. It's got 17 million views. It's likely you've seen this video if you're here right now, right? Uh, but if you're watching YouTube video, maybe maybe you haven't. You should watch this video if you haven't. It's great. It's three and a half or four hours long. Uh, H-Bomb is awesome. Friend of the show. This is James Summerton um, making a video. This is a second apology video. There was another apology video on this channel. James Summerton has now put his face back on the fucking channel, which is interesting. So we're just trying to do a, a, like a relaunch. There's some videos that are still out. All the videos are up or just some of them. These are the ones that I didn't fucking plagiarize. These are videos that I made, right? Okay, cool. This is called a measured response. So calling this a measured response is sassy as fuck. If you don't know why, it's because H Bomber guy who made the video about him that ruined his shit often makes videos with a, like a measured response, a measured response, vaccines and autism, which is also a great video. Every video is great. Uh, H bomber guy, um, never misses. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Climate denial, measured response four years. I mean, he's only done it a few times, but like, uh, it's part of his brand. So this is like sassy, right? This is like sassy. A measured response. So initially, I'm already like, fuck off, right? But I'm showing you the the minute seven mark of this. We're going to go back to the beginning, obviously, to watch this. Um, here's the thing. In the last uh, apology video, which was uh, deleted from the channel, uh, though I have a version of mine uploaded to my channel, if you haven't seen it, it actually got deleted, so some people couldn't get to it whenever that came out. I don't know where it would be. Summerton... Uh, so if you haven't seen my first uh, video on this, I actually have the whole apology video. If you've never seen it in the raw, I'll put it in chat. And then uh, if you're on YouTube there, you won't just click over there. Just find it. You, you can do it. So in that apology video, the whole fucking thing was a pity party. There was crying. There was like, oh, my God, I, 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 I tried to hurt myself, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and never really taking responsibility for what's going on. Um, it's all just like... You should feel bad for me. Here's why. Um, no responsible responsibility taken. Um, uh, there was lots of other stuff in there. Worth a watch if you haven't seen it, uh, if you care about this. But what what a lot of people really didn't like was that it was a pity party the whole time, right? Like, James Summerton was essentially uh, just weeping and telling people, don't be mean to me, I'm a little guy. And <laughs> calling this video sassily a measure response. And then starting the video with this. Content warning, discussion of self-harm. Cool. So we're going to do this every once in a while. <laughs> it just starts this way. <sighs> so it's already, I, I feel like this is a, you know, you can you can lampshade it with, oh, I'm doing a responsible thing because at some point it comes up. You could literally put that content warning in the, you know, right before this video, right before this happens. Hey, editing, uh, editor's warning in about a minute I'm going to talk about this stuff so please skip to here you could do that but this is for attention uh, this is already pity stuff uh, starting off on a bad foot let's hear it um, here's what we're going to do I'm going to start off at normal speed and then uh, as I get progressively more annoyed maybe we'll speed it up to a reasonable speed we'll see it's 43 minutes <laughs> that's the that's the play now though uh, long videos <laughs> I just start speeding them up if they start to get annoying okay Let's go. Uh, just a disclosure, this video is monetized. Cool. But revenue from it will be sent along to <clears throat> H-Bomber Guy's team to be dispersed to the people whose work I plagiarized. Uh, okay, so, sus. I mean, I don't know if I believe that. Uh, your credibility is shot. Cool, if you do. Uh, totally shot, though. Um, whatever. Of course it's fucking... Of course. Uh, if his team won't accept it, 
I'll be making monthly donations to Wikipedia and Trans Lifeline going forward. Uh, you may have also if this team won't accept it. Okay. Notice that a few monthly of donations. My past videos have gone up on the channel again, and revenue from those as well will also be sent along with the revenue from this video. Over the last couple of months, I've been getting in touch with the people who I plagiarized. Wikipedia, cool. <laughs> to apologize one-on-one -on -one instead of a mass apology. It's a bit difficult because many of them don't have public email addresses, so I'm still working on it, but it is a top priority of mine. I've heard back from a few of them, and they were actually incredibly nice, um, accepting my apology and just imploring me to do better in the future. So, huh. so I want to thank them publicly for that, uh, did you ask permission to show receipts of uh, the types of responses that you're getting? Also suspicious. <laughs> no, I don't believe anything you say now, right? So it's like, thanks for accepting my apology. Right. Like, super weird. Super fucking weird, man. How, I, how do you, I just don't understand the type of personality that thinks that this is the thing that people want to hear from you. <laughs> There's plenty that I haven't heard back from and right. I completely understand that in many cases uh i wouldn't want to talk to me either i also want to oh, oh oh dude this fucking bullshit i wouldn't want to talk to me either oh fuck it's always it's so pity as to my audience though you trusted me to be a good representative of the queer community and i was not that hey I understand that you're, like, worked up about the James Summerton stuff, but can you relax? Okay, man. We're trying to be professional. <laughs> hey, we're trying to be professionals! I tried to be. I tried to be a voice for every member of the queer community, but that uh -huh. was a failed endeavor before it even started. I'm a cis, white, gay man. No uh. matter how much I try to be a good spokesperson... Uh. I can never really truly understand the life experiences of other far more uh, put upon members of the queer community. This is one of the reasons uh, that I would Okay, their hold own. on, I am groaning. I'm groaning, that counts. We're gotta, we have to. I mean, I just, I just fucking... Uh, now we're doing identity politics, bro? No one cares. No one gives a fuck. Oh, no one's critique of you was that you were a white cis gay man... So you can't make the videos you plagiarized. It was about the plagiarism. What? Words. But I should have made it very clear that that's what I was doing. Ugh. I never, ever thought that I was the only voice out there, as some have said. But being a cis white man, I thought I might be able to win over some people who wouldn't otherwise listen unless it was someone who looks and sounds just like them. And so... Who thinks like this? What? You thought, okay, so now we're pivoting to like, actually I was trying to use my position of privilege for good or something? In, a, in like a calculated way? What? <laughs> just, I'm annoyed by you. How do you... Do you have any people that you talk to about this? How is this? <sighs> oh, I tried speaking for everyone. And this was a horrible mistake. What I thought was being inclusive ended up leading to a lot of people feeling left out and even offended. This felt it was about your plagiarism. You were weird in other ways. There was like the misogyny and stuff, which I definitely agree with. But like, what, man? upon Go. Nick like not even listening it's totally performative absolutely how long did it take you to write this so instead of months of reflection we spent months stewing on it gotcha yeah as well as a non-binary person on the a spectrum they wanted to include asexuality and non-binary representation in our videos but because Nick's experience is not universal there is no universal experience people felt that we were delegitimizing their own experiences because we focused on Nick's, and I apologize for that. What? Why is yeah? Why is Nick part of this? And I'm sure that Nick does as well. Um, I'd also like to extend a personal apology. 
to Jesse Earl, better known as Jesse Gender. Out of everyone that I spoke to who was also a YouTuber, Jesse was by far the kindest person. I think Jesse might be one of the kindest people I've ever met or ever encountered. We never actually met in person. Because of my hot headedness, I drew her into just this anger spiral of mine that was unwarranted and absolutely ruined a possible friendship. Jessie was actually doing her best to kind of mitigate my frustration and, and everything and and uh, at that moment. And I just wasn't allowing her to do that. And I really... There, there is a little bit of uh, honest. of Jesse where it's just too, too nice. I agree. <laughs> a liberal, yeah, you know. Honestly, want to apologize to her for that again. If if you ever get the chance to speak with Jesse one on one, or if you have gotten the chance, you'll know just how nice she is and how kind. And I was a a real asshole for uh, dragging her into my reactionary unwarranted frustration okay. uh, we, I'm not, obviously we haven't spoken i am annoyed but it's, this isn't why it's actually because he talks slow <laughs> like this is 43 minutes but it's like 20 minutes of actual things since all that happened um but jesse if you are watching this video um i do want you to know that i am honestly sorry for that i hope truly honestly i hope everything goes as well as possible for you because you deserve all of it there was a misunderstanding between jesse and i um after that happened that i do want to clear up where someone who at least claimed to be a fan of jesse's you know did an internet and threatened to kill me which is you know being a person on the internet death threats are unfortunately not uncommon oh so that's why we brought up jesse so that we could be like well here's the compliment and then i'm going to say well and part of your audience is sending me death threats you know like uh cool a measured response. At the time, though, uh, I was in a very panicked state, and so I did report it to the police. I did not report Jesse to the police, which is the misunderstanding that people um, came away with. I did not report Jesse to the police. I would have no reason to do that. And it did end up that this person had a prior record with the police um, of violent acts, and they actually lived quite near me. Um, so the police took it very seriously. They took it so seriously that they implored me not to speak to Jesse, which I took their advice on, which I shouldn't have, honestly. I should have at least clarified to Jesse what was going on and not just left her hanging. And so I want to, again, apologize to Jesse for that. But in that state, I listened to the police, which is, you know, maybe not the best decision all the time because the cops don't usually have the best interests of people at heart. So, Jesse, I want to apologize for that and everything else. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. That happened. Completely understand why you would not want to speak to me ever again, but I just want you to know that I am sorry. But now back on the original topic, the work Nick and I were doing on the channel. Nick and I, it's all, what? You call the channel James Summerton. You have to understand that. Well, we wanted it to be, you know, for everyone. We wanted it to be a channel where every queer person could feel welcomed. And we failed at that. That is something that in hindsight, I think is impossible to create. And that's why it's. I disagree that it's impossible to create an environment where every type of queer person feels comfortable around you. What, man? <laughs> I, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say I have a, a diverse array of queer people in the audience right cool. now. Right. And it's literally a vibes thing. That's it. Are you safe? Are you normal? Like, no on both accounts for Summerton. Uh, but also, let me out a potential member of your fan base so you can get attacked. Right. It's not possible. Lazy as fuck. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what? <clears throat> like, just <laughs> a great way to do this is to not assert things that you don't know. Right. And to cite your sources that are making the claims. Right. So you wouldn't have been on the hook for the things you said if they were quotes from other people. If you put quotes around them and, and properly source them. Right. All of your problems had, would have been solved. Right. Because uh, you know, these are misunderstandings. Right. It's important for there to be many different queer voices in spaces like YouTube. And there are. What's more important is that those voices are discoverable, which is something that I should have been helping with. I often shared other queer creators on Twitter, but this was when 
I only had, you know, 800, 1,000 Twitter followers. And these creators usually had a whole lot more than that. It was a weird Oops. thing because usually they would have infinitely more Twitter followers, but a whole lot less YouTube subscribers. I'm not sure what created that dichotomy, but something was definitely off with the algorithm there. There is a part of my brain. The, the, you're not a, you're not a good presence on Twitter. It's a different platform, man. Uh. Uh. I mean, that says YouTube kind of went, oh, you know, white male queer, let's push him and, oh, you know, fuck you, else. dude. That's not why. <laughs> the videos were doing well because they, they felt well done. But it turns out they felt well done because the well done parts were other people's words and not your own. Right? And then upon further examination, some of the video sucks. That's I mean, you lost subscribers for some natural reasons during the course. Like, he's completely ignoring his e-begging behavior on Twitter as well. Oh, I mean, maybe he'll get into it. We're only eight minutes in. Else in the community, whereas people were able to actually discover uh, other queer creators on Twitter and then make their way to YouTube, but the YouTube algorithm kind of... That's the most negative interpretation I have of it, which unfortunately may be true uh, in any case. I should have done more to share the voices of other queer people, certainly the people whose works I used, both credited and plagiarized in my videos, but also just other creators on YouTube. It's important for us as a community, as vaguely defined as we are, both to support each other. And I didn't do that nearly enough. From day one, I was very taken in by the idea of being a YouTuber. As soon as my videos started to get recommended by the algorithm after not releasing a new video for like two years, I felt like I had a short period of time to get the next videos out as soon as possible, which is why so little work was put into the writing of them, and so much was taken from other places, plagiarized. Early on, I thought crediting authors in the opening credits alone was enough, especially since the videos weren't monetized early on. But I understand now, especially after speaking with some of the people who were who I did plagiarize, that that was just... I was wrong. That was not the way to go about it. They should have been cited properly within the text of the video. They should have been called out in the video at least once, verbally, as well as, you know, having citations on screen. If there were a whole lot of them, like with, you know, one of the examples that H. Bomber guy used in his video was the Deep Cuts video, there were a whole lot of people who I, you know, credited in the opening credits, but really it's plagiarism. They should have been cited on screen with actual citations of, you know, Cr credited in the opening credits. Keeps, keeps hedging. Just, just, I don't want you to continue to plagiarize everyone's words and just show that I'm, look, I'm plagiarizing the whole time and still monetizing. I'm just compiling. I'm making compilations, right? Like, if you don't have anything actually interesting to say, then don't. You can use quotes from other people to, like, Go. bolster what your content already is, but you have to do the work of writing the script or it's not your work or however you want to produce your content. Are you forgetting the fact that 98% of the videos were, like, direct quotes? Right, that's what, like, it's it's <laughs> it's crazy. He assumes that his style of theft is just all of YouTube. Right. Like, you can't just say, oh, the whole fucking video is cited. That's still plagiarism, man. Like, the work has to be mostly yours, and bolst you can bolster it with other people's. You couldn't even direct quote correctly? Right. Links where you can find this stuff. Maybe there should have even been a bibliography that you could have gone to, like, on a Google Drive or something like that. Too because, fast. You know, although I might have stated that the scripts were based upon the work of these authors, it, in many cases, wasn't just based on their work. It was their work. Word for word. In some cases, yeah, I did man. get permission, like with the Evil Queens Disney video. I'll put the email up on the screen that I got from Sean Griffin, um, where he did give me permission to. In September 2020, Tinker Bell and Evil Queens video. I see. I was passed much about the relationship with Disney as, as your pieces. I recognize and I largely agree with the issues you're raising with the, at least a bit of citation. Was this before it came out? This is from one person? Is this still on your fucking channel? Is that why? Are you going to put that? Is that one of the videos that are available? Tinkerbell? I'm not seeing Tinkerbell. No. It's interesting. You got permission from that, but you're not putting it out? It's not one of your fucking videos? Huh. So who, so you didn't get permission from any fucking buddy else, man? Published the video. I sent the finished video to him, and he watched it and he gave me permission. But in most Wait, cases, before you did it, video. I sent the finished video to him, Sean Griffin, um, where he did give me permission to publish the video. I sent the finished video to him. 
and he watched it and he gave me permission. But so you didn't publish it until after. He uploaded it, took it down, then he sent it and uploaded it again. Oh my god, dude. You I was going to say like the timeline of events doesn't make any sense. <laughs> wow. So that was after the fact. Cool. In most cases, I didn't get permission and thought that just putting the author's name in the opening credits was enough. I was much more interested in the production of the videos than the writing of them at this point. So after three or four videos, I brought Nick on as a main writer for the channel. The idea is that they would write the vast majority of the scripts. I would film, voice, and edit the videos, and we'd split the money that came in. We were roommates at the time, and Nick didn't have a job, so I figured it would help both of us. This is actually when we had some of our biggest videos, uh, like the ones talking about Wiccan and Hulkling, where we lucked out because it came out right in time for WandaVision to hit. And then the Killing Stalking video, which became our biggest video by far. Uh, the Sadism of Class was another one. These videos weren't plagiarized, and we loved making them. Uh, it didn't take- These videos weren't plagiarized? The Sadism of Class. Oops, I already had it open. Where's it at? Two years ago? Killing Stalking. Scarlet Witch. These are these are all three years. We we have anything recent? Some of these are, but you didn't. You didn't. This video is a hundred percent written by you and Nick. Are these all patrons? We don't have a single directed and edited by James Summerton. Do you have writing How credit for we Nick? Can be to, we, can bring. Do we have a Nick written by. Written by? Written by? Written by? Written by? Nick! There we go! Wow. <laughs> right at the end. But there's no, there's no fucking, yeah, very, very, uh, interesting music. Um. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know. I didn't see any. I didn't see. You didn't source anything in that video? Fascinating. Take long for the channel income to start growing. Lucky timing, really, because this was around the same time that I was laid off since the company that I was working for downsized once COVID hit its second year. Nick and I had both grown up poor, so we started doing what we could to try and stabilize our income as much as possible. This meant putting out more videos, which meant I had to take over more of the writing duties. But since filming, editing, usually doing multiple edits because of YouTube copyright issues, as well as managing the channel, and dealing with my mom's recent cancer diagnosis, all of that was already taking up so much of my time and attention. This led to a lot of copy and pasting blocks of text. Into my mom had cancer, so I violated all of the trust that I had with my community. Very cool. <laughs> uh, I don't care how true it is. You can't, like, you just lean on pity too much. You can't fucking, you can't keep doing that. It's crazy to keep doing that scripts. My intention at the time was to use these as a jumping off point once Nick and I sat down to edit the script because that's what we would do. I would sort of put in my parts, Nick would put in his parts, and then we would sit down at a table, read through the whole script, and kind of try and make it seem cohesive. But, and here's something I'm sure a lot of people will call a bullshit excuse, I have memory issues oh. because of a head injury from when I was a child. Uh, uh. Actually getting worse. I've talked about it on streams and in videos, so yes, it is real but some people will call it a bullshit excuse anyway. The head injury is actually what led to me having epilepsy, which is why I can't work in any job that involves physical labor. Employer. Any job that involves physical labor because of epilepsy? I have worked with, I one of my co-workers used to have epilepsy, man, he fell, he fell on the ground and hit his head open and started bleeding and everything. Uh, you can work if you have epilepsy, dude. In fact, I think the blinking screens would be worse for your fucking ep epilepsy, but who knows. Uh, please don't make me get a job as a barista. Man, this is fucking, this is a, an excuse. It is. What do you, we don't care. This, <laughs> who gives a fuck? <laughs> God damn it. We all have ADHD, man. I certainly do. Uh, then have someone double check your work, you're lying weirdo. Dude, ADHD has never prevented anyone from citing a source. Yours can't get insurance for me to like lift things or operate vehicles and stuff like that. I actually did marketing for a restaurant group for a little while, but got let go when they found out that I was epileptic because, at least according to them, I couldn't be insured to be in the kitchens. Where uh... 
That's illegal, man. They didn't fire you for being epileptic. That's fucking illegal. Ugh. Where I needed to be to film videos and take photos and stuff like that. But anyway, when it came to editing the scripts, I couldn't remember what I'd written and what had been copy-pasted. We should have just chucked out everything that I had put into the scripts and filled them in with wholly original thoughts. Or I should have been taking notes on where things came from so that we could at least cite them in the videos, if nothing else. But I never did that. According to my... It's because you didn't write the scripts. You copy and pasted. If I'm writing a script... I would put quotes and the thing around it while I'm writing the script. I simply wouldn't copy and paste it wholesale into my paragraph. Hello? That's not... You don't need to remember that. It's because you do it the first time. This is just plagiarism. How have you never written anything in your life? <laughs> Yeah, he must think his audience is dumb. I don't get it either. I have no idea how you can buy this. Therapist, my not thinking to do that probably stems from my recently diagnosed ADHD, but I don't Fuck know if you. to say that, really. Maybe it was, or maybe it was just plain laziness. Maybe I thought. Just fuck you. This is, like, offensive. <laughs> fuck off. That this was somewhere that I could cut a corner because I was torn in so many other directions. Honestly, I can't remember, like I said. Memory issues. But yes, we should have just thrown out my contributions to the scripts and filled them in with original writing but we felt like we had too much of a time crunch oh my we felt like we had to get God. videos out more often to feed the algorithm and then my mom died and i became completely useless i couldn't think straight at all so nick had to completely take over writing duties while i dealt with things you deal with after a person dies my dad <sighs> he can't read or write uh he was very poor when he was a kid so he had to leave school really young to work in order to feed his many brothers and sisters so I had to deal with all the legal stuff after my mom died, as well as making sure that all my... My mom died and my dad's illiterate, so I had to plagiarize the fucking YouTube work. <laughs> I think you're just a, cool. like a liar, man. Like, I don't know. This sounds fucking... This sounds nuts. Uh, if I ever get canceled, it's because I took the side view mirror off a pickup truck with my face as a teenager. Not some shitty actions that I have taken. <laughs> Why the fuck are we talking about his parental trauma? I don't know. To understand why I committed the crime, Your Honor, we're going to have to go back to the beginning. Ugh. Cool, man. Dad's bills were paid and whatnot, especially after his income was basically cut in half. There was supposed to be a buffer here, money-wise, as my mom had a life insurance policy that was going to be split between my dad and myself. But the insurance company, RBC Insurance, so if you have insurance with them, maybe rethink that, uh, refused to pay out the policy because my mother never mentioned that she had family with diabetes. She didn't have diabetes, but because she didn't think to mention that she had family with diabetes, it apparently voided the policy. All they did was <sighs> refund a year's worth of premiums that she paid even though she'd been paying them for about 15 years. One of the things, the main thing, really. So yeah. you plagiarized because the insurance company is a piece of shit? I was supposed to do with my portion of the insurance money was I was supposed to make a movie. These were direct instructions from my mom herself. She'd been very much behind me when I decided, when I was about 10, <laughs> that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And she wanted me to finally have the opportunity to do that, uh -huh. even if she never got to see it. So when the life insurance went bust, I, did I decided to try and crowdfund it. Yeah, I crowdfunded my dead mom wants me to make a movie. How is this? It got worse. How does this get worse? <sighs> you ever seen a guy just dig straight down in Minecraft? <laughs> At least enough to make a short film or two. This is what Telos grew out of. So, what happened with Telos? Let me break down the timeline. When we launched the campaign in February of 2022, we hoped to raise $3,000 to produce a short film that we hoped that we would then use as a sort of proof of concept to attract investors, either private, public, or through Canada's telefilm program to produce a feature. Some people online have stated that $3,000 never would have covered the cost of a short film, but these were not going to be unionized movies, and we were very clear about that upfront. We wanted to be able to pay actors as best that we could, but we never expected to be able to reach typical union wages. The crew was going... Wow. We were going to cut wages for the actors. <laughs> nice.
to be made up of people that I had gone to film school with. Everyone, including Nick and myself, we were roommates at the time living on the East Coast, were more than happy to work behind the scenes for free. We planned on writing a movie with a small cast and only one or two locations, ideally ones that we could get access to for free. Again, we assumed all of the money would go to the actors. Go. Uh, we kind of looked at this as a sort of community theater troupe, but for filmmaking. After the campaign launched, it did infinitely better than we could have expected, and uh -huh. our ambitions grew. We started planning to make a feature instead of a short film, and the plan was to take this around to uh, film festivals. The feature. Why wouldn't you just try to make the short film better with the budget you have? You already had the idea for the short film, didn't you? What is your response to plagiarizing everything? This is his response. This is why he did this. He did all of it for this. Sure, we settled on, entitled Final Girl, was about the lone survivor of a slasher movie type massacre 10 years after the fact, as she was publishing a book about her ordeal. Drawing attention from people online convinced that she had actually been the killer all along. In the end, we would find out that the killer was the boyfriend of the girl who the main character had secretly been dating at the time of the killings. He kept rotating out old films and would announce new ones all the time with fake movie posters? Just... <laughs> and most of the people he killed were, in his eyes, collateral damage as he made his way to our main character. Because he was not happy that his girlfriend was cheating on him with a girl. And to those who say that I plagiarized the plot from the novel Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, read the book. It's nothing like the plot of the movie. And the final girl is a trope in horror movies. So if using the final girl trope is plagiarism, then basically everyone who's made a slasher movie since Texas Chainsaw Massacre owes the Toby Hooper estate some money. But anyway, Nick and I planned out the movie, but I didn't want to start writing it until the campaign ended and the money was actually deposited. Uh, after the insurance debacle, I didn't want to count our chickens before they hatched. When the money was officially deposited, I immediately began work on the screenplay. I finished it that summer, soon after Nick had left to spend two months at home in Ottawa, Ontario with family. I sent the script to him to read right away because I was pr very proud of it, but Nick didn't want to share his opinion on it until he got back to the East Coast. So in the meantime, I put out a preliminary casting call on local job boards. When Nick uh -huh. got back, uh, he believed that the script needed a page one rework. This is also when he told me that he'd be moving back to Ontario permanently soon, as he wanted to live closer to family and live in a bigger city with more opportunities. It was Nick's fault. It was Nick's fault. That's what we're doing. Interesting. Sounds, sounds like Nick thought it was bad, right? Uh, <laughs> Nick is the true villain. That's right. Uh, I personally get very fr frustrated with these kinds of justifications since I have a lot of medical issues. I constantly feel like I'm asking for too much slack when I take naps or ask for minor extensions to deadlines. If someone tries to blanket years of blatant plagiarism and scamming with excuses like this, I want to scream, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. How can he remember all these details and not what he needed to cite? Because he has memory issues. Wait. This was a punch to the gut for me. We've been living together. Memory issues, but... What? what? Since 2015? And had become quite dependent. You remember? We've been living together since 2015. Dude, I can't remember the year I moved into this house offhand. I have to think. 2018? I think. 2018? Could have been 2017. <laughs> he actually stole thousands of dollars and never shot a single thing with a fancy camera equipment he spent like 8K on on each other. I felt like there was no way that I could make this movie without him. And since I had received not that many replies to the initial casting call, I took this as a sign that Ontario would be a better place to launch Hellos, even though all my professional professional film connections were on the East Coast. That was a mistake. There, I had free access to the campground that would serve as the setting for a good portion of the movie, as well as easy access to any number of houses, apartments, and even offices that friends of friends would let me use to shoot. In Ontario, I had none of that which immediately put the brakes on Final Girl since there was no conceivable way of filming it, at least not within the budget that we had. After Nick and uh -huh. I moved to the Toronto area, he decided that he actually wanted to move home to Ottawa, uh, to the Ottawa area, about five hours away, at least for a little while. In the meantime, he would take a train to the GTA, the greater Toronto area, once a month uh, to work on YouTube videos for a few days and then head back. This went on for a little less than a year. Go. So I began brainstorming new movies that we could film in. So your citations on your story here, James. How do I know you're telling the truth about the whole Final Girls thing? I don't know. <laughs> He's not bringing up the, the camera. In Ontario. This is where the multiple posters and teaser trailers came from. I was trying to create something tangible to show that work was still being done with Telos. I wrote multiple treatments for movies over the next few months, and Nick and I eventually landed on one called Antisocial, a murder mystery about a former social media clique who had gone their separate ways on very bad terms, and they were coming together for a reunion as sort of VidCon event. Um, they were all sharing a house, and then some of them were going to start showing up dead. Around the same time, summer of 2023, uh, Nick had moved to the GTA full-time. 
Uh, he and I spent weeks working out exactly how the murder mystery would parse out in the movie. We had a bunch of whiteboards up on my wall and we were just breaking it down piece by piece. Uh, I put out a new casting call in the GTA and received hundreds of responses. So I was planning on casting as soon as the script was finished. But after trying to work out the numbers as far as paying actors went, plus locations, food, costumes, as well as the equipment that we'd already purchased and the legal costs. The of equipment we had purchased. There, there's the mention. As a business, we realized that we'd gone way too big with this movie. Uh, the movie had too many characters, too many locations, and it was just way too complex to be able to pull off with the budget. So I started working on a script for a movie called The Listener about a true crime podcaster focused on the mysterious deaths of homeless gay men in his city. I was a fair way... A lot of deaths of queer people in your stuff. They keep dying in every pitch you have. They keep dying. That's fucking weird, man. <laughs> huh. Anyway, here's another movie pitch, right? Anyway, I got lots of, I'm an ideas guy. If anyone's looking for uh, an ideas guy. To the script, when we realized it'd be about a year before we could even film anything, since winter was on its way and the story relied heavily on a summer setting. So we went back to the drawing board yet again, finally settling on a modern day adaptation of The Vampire based on the book by John Polidori. Uh, it's one of the original works of published vampire fiction. It's never received a proper film adaptation and was in public domain, so we thought it would be a great choice. And the cast could be kept down basically five characters, with only two of them being on screen most of the time. Nick and I both wrote treatments for it, which we So, played. it's public domain plagiarism? Sick. That's fucking sick, dude. And on... And planned on melding together into a final treatment that we would write the script based on. I'm going to steal his life story from this video and turn it into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we'd had a meeting about it and we were talking about how best to move forward <coughs> how fast we could get the script written how long it would take to cast how soon we could start shooting we knew that it had been a while since the initial funding of fellows came in and we wanted to get something concrete out as soon as possible after the meeting we went to dinner and while at dinner i started getting messages about the h-bomber guy video we were in oh we were doing it and h-bomb messed it up we were in. We were at dinner doing the fucking, doing the damn thing. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> Over our heads when we left <coughs> the East Coast, but the intention was never, ever, to take the money and run. I was so insanely excited about getting to make Telos a reality. I was excited about getting to make a short film, let alone a feature. It's always been my dream to make movies. So Telos meant, and means. The world to me. So in a way, H Bomber Guy ruined the final wish of my dead mom, if you think about it. <laughs> cool. For Nick, it was a very exciting project, but not his passion. Nick wanted to write novels. He still does. Nick looked at this as a good creative outlet that was way more fulfilling than writing video essays. I should have stayed where I was and not gone to Ontario. The move uprooted everything that was solid about Telos, and it took a whole year to get it back onto even anything close to stable footing. But I am working with a producer now, so you can expect an actual product from Telos this year. It will likely be a short film to start off, but there is going to be something coming out of Telos this year. Nobody wants this now. What? This is an advert? <laughs> You've just spent f fucking 25 minutes trying to tell us that I got lots of ideas and I'm going to upload stuff. I know I've lost your trust, but I will make nothing financially from this project. The money that is there will go wholly to paying queer artists to work on a queer film. Uh -huh. I am not, nor have I ever intended to be, one of the people paid by Telos. Neither was Nick. We made this very clear to everyone who asked. During our work on Telos is also when the YouTube channel started getting sponsors. Which, yeah, but I spent a little bit of money on dinner and stuff every once in a while. You know, those are business expensive. You know, and travel and fucking all this other stuff. Cameras, those are, you know, I, I, those aren't for me. That's for, you know, it's not, I'm not, I'm not making that money because it's not my account. <laughs> as I said, as someone who grew up poor, I basically accepted all of them. Except for a few that I didn't think lined up with the message of the channel or had some bad news surrounding them. There were a couple that had some anti-trans stuff going on in the news and I just didn't want to associate with that. But by accepting as many sponsors as we did, which became very important when Nick started living apart and suddenly had two rents to pay, uh -huh. we ended up needing to produce even more videos. Wow, which, along fun. with the work on Telos and making sure everything was okay with my dad while living thousands of kilometers away, meant I had even less time for writing. 
putting more stress on Nick and leading to even more copy pasting for me. That's what led to us putting out, I think, six videos in one month at one point. It might have been five, but in any case, it was way too damn many videos to go out in one month. We tried to take the summer off from YouTube in 2023 to work on Telos exclusively, but even that went up in smoke because my housing situation just... I won't go into it here. Oh, I okay. It ad nauseum on streams and stuff. If you followed me on social media, you know the clusterfuck I ended up in that led to me moving twice in two months. In the last couple of months, I received a lot of emails, as wow. you can imagine. Uh, you won't go into they, that. We'll go into fucking, I have your entire life's history here, but no, it's not this two months. And even people who were rightfully let down. His memory from, of these parts is flawless. That's fascinating. Yeah. Great memory. From people threatening everything from doxing to violence because of the internet. Some with the kindest words of support I've ever heard and others simply asking, Ooh, are we coming up to your content warning? We are. Nice. Why I made it so difficult to contact me and if I was okay. They wanted to know why, as they put it, I nuked my social media presence. To be frank, it's because I didn't want to exist anymore. If you watch my honestly horrendous apology video back in December, you know I tried to make that happen. Mm -hmm. The not existing thing. But it was more intense than taking too many pills. It's not that I didn't want to be alive anymore. It's that I wished I'd never existed at all. That everyone I'd ever known would be better off had I just never been there. Oh. That's pretty sad. Yeah, I don't care. Very George Bailey, which is fitting, given that it was Christmas. Cool. It's only thanks to some very, very dedicated doctors and nurses and one very good friend that I'm even here cool. able to film this right now. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I hope you have a fantastic day. Nobody cares about your life story. Yeah, I mean, this is it's fucked up. I agree, Dr. Gamble. Uh, football helmet wearing killer stock. <laughs> remotely mellow 21 months thank you very much he even plagiarized his depression yep it's 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 very un, a reference i'm not going to name her because i don't want to expose anyone else to the it feels manipulative it felt a ma manipulative the first time he did it too small but seriously unstable group of people who watched the plagiarism in youtube video and thought well, he should be dead. Like I said, it's a, it's you a, thought that. You thought it. Look, look, man. I'm not saying you should kill yourself over a YouTube video. I'm saying that you should stop blaming other people for these things. You did this. It's a very small group, but when they find out your address, and some of them are actually in your city, they can be terrifying. Wow. And they did find my address. Wow. And at least a couple of them showed up. Cool. While I was at the hospital. That's nuts. They um, showed up to the hospital. Wow. They showed up to your fucking hospital room like a mob. This is not real. My neighbors did report them to the police. Uh, and I, I won't go into any more details than that. I'm not sure if I legally even can. But there's a reason I left Ontario within a week of getting the okay to do so from the doctors. So what's next then? Like I said. You'll notice that a few of my videos are live again on the channel. These ones don't come from plagiarized content, and for the most part are written entirely by Nick. Nick lost three years worth of work when everything on the channel was taken down, and that's simply not fair to Nick. He worked hard writing those videos and deserves to have something to point to when he's looking for new writing work. I've also done some heavy editing on other videos that did contain... How, how is Nick's work different? You keep throwing Nick under the bus. So now now all the videos, if you don't like any of the videos that are uploaded, they're all... Whoops. Fuck. They're all fucking Nick's. Unstable group of people. City. Um, my neighbors did report them to the police. Jesus. I left Ontario within a week of getting the okay to do so from the doctors. <laughs> it's just so stupid, man. Why is why is Nick being thrown under the fucking bus? How do you feel like this is helping Nick? $1. Quick question, is Nick actually complicit or is he just being set up as a fall guy? Probably both. Complicit in that worked with James Somerton. Fucking fall guy in that James Somerton's the only one that wants to fucking be on camera and talk about this. So what's next then? Like I said, 
You'll notice that Nick seems to be either really fucking stupid or lying. Yeah. My videos are live again on the channel. These ones don't come from plagiarized content, and for the most part, are written entirely by Nick. Nick lost three years worth of work when everything on the channel was taken down, and that's this is simply so stupid. not fair to Nick. He worked hard writing those videos and deserves to have something to point to when he's looking for new writing work. I've also done some heavy editing on other videos that did contain other people's writing, um, breaking it down to only original content, again, so that Nick has an actual portfolio of work. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, revenue from these will be going to the H Bomber Guy team to be sent out to the writers I plagiarized from or donated to charity. However, it works out in the end. How about Nick, then? If those are Nick's videos, what? These edited videos will be going back up on the channel in the next few days, I think, um, along with two completed video essays that we didn't actually get to release before everything happened. There's also some recent videos that didn't have any plagiarism that the sponsor asked to be taken down and their ads removed. Um, so they'll also be going back up without the sponsors, obviously. And soon I will be- Back cool. up with- <laughs> Putting more videos out? Oh my god. It's all Nick's fault, but it's also unfair to Nick. Pick a lane. Be releasing a new video written entirely by me properly cited with all sources credited maybe no. not watch it but i hope you do i want to prove that i have the ability to do this without abusing other people's work no. it's a very different kind of video than i used to make though i'd say it's more of a documentary than a video essay you no. won't find my opinions anywhere in there just cited facts i'd like to keep making videos like these new ones just so cited old. facts you won't find my... Literally, we're just going to do a compilation of other people's ideas. You won't find my... Just cited facts. Holy fucking shit. That's plagiarism still. To do an entire thing where it's only Go. other people's shit. How does he think these are going to keep working? Yeah, man. I don't know. He keeps trying to manipulate people. I agree. ...and events in gay history and definitive gay movies that you maybe never heard of. Stuff like that. It's actually something that I planned on doing this year anyway. There would be two videos a month. Nick would write a video essay and I would write one of these documentary style videos that would fulfill the two videos per month sponsorship deal that we had at the time. I have no sponsors now, so probably not going to be two videos a month. It'll probably just be the one, which will give more time for research and citation and crediting and making sure that there is no misinformation in the videos uh which i know i know that misinformation made its way into uh, our past videos that was not something that we intended in some cases it was information that i was told yeah he doesn't get it you don't get to do this job anymore man that's it it's cooked by people that i considered experts um in other cases it was information that we had researched uh in other cases it was things that Nick had learned in university. The point being, it was never malicious. We didn't... Nick was taught this in university. No, he wasn't. He was not taught plagiarism. <laughs> we weren't trying to lie about things, uh -huh. despite what a lot of people think. Jesus. We were not trying to spread misinformation. That was not ever our intention. And that's something else that I want to apologize for. As for my Patreon... Everyone can stop worrying about me relaunching it right in time for a billing cycle. That will not be happening. I don't want anyone who either doesn't know about the plagiarism or simply forgot to unsubscribe to get billed. So I'm going to start from zero. I have put together a new Patreon account. Oh, good. A new one. A new Patreon. How long before the swing to right wing content? Because it's the only way to make any fucking money. You don't have a Patreon. Like... It's crazy that you think you can monetize stuff again, put out more fucking content. You have to fucking walk away. You don't get to make this content anymore. You cooked. So if you want to support my documentaries about gay history, oh, fantastic. Honestly, yeah. your faith in me after everything means... Here's an world. ad for my new Patreon. Not, I completely understand. Like I said. I've lost your trust. I'm going to work my ass off to earn it back, though. Uh -huh. And I know for some of you, I'll never be able to do that. But I'm going to try anyway. You know, there's a link in the description to the Patreon if you want to join it. Dude. Where you'll be able to see the two yet-to-be-released videos right now. As well as, you know, take part in other stuff that will be on there. Like a book club, podcasts, uh, voting on upcoming videos. All the usual Patreon stuff. But this video is not about promoting myself. This oh. video is about me apologizing. Is and it? 
when is that going to start? Is it about apology? I'm incredibly sorry. It was never my intention for anyone to feel hurt or left <laughs> out or excluded. It was or never my intention excluded. to spread misinformation. And I'm really, really sorry that that happened. And, you know, as, as much as I've tried to explain myself in this video, you know, the memory issues, the ADHD. Memory um, issues and ADHD. My recollection of all the fucking life events leading up to all of these things, totally crystal clear. Totally fine. I have specific memory issues around the concept of citation and crediting people that I rip off and making YouTube videos with any kind of fucking, like, of my own effort instead of just copying and pasting other people's words into paragraphs and making them fit together. Amazing. The personal things that were going on in my life with my mom getting sick and then dying oh and my. to make sure that my dad was okay following that and everything. Those aren't excuses. <sighs> There is no excuse for what I did. There Bringing them up multiple YouTube. times aren't excuses. TV shows, movies, documentaries. Who have this is non-apology shit. Shit going on in their lives. That's very stressful. And they uh -huh. don't plagiarize people's work. There yeah, is man. no excuse for what I did. For everything <laughs> that happened. Okay, through. so you can't say that while cool. lampshading it with the excuses. That's why it feels bad. That's why it rings hollow. I mean, and your actions after the point, like you're monetizing things, making a new p fucking Patreon and shit. Like, there's all the excuses. My ADHD, damn. Would be with my mom or the memory issues. He deleted Todd in the have. shadows commenting. What did Todd say? I've done to mitigate that. There's nothing I could have done about my mom getting cancer. But no. It's so awful. This is fucking awful. No one is liking this. Doink. Knowing my patrons, as I did, in hindsight, I'm pretty damn sure that if I had said, guys, I need to step away for a couple of months to deal with this, I don't think a whole lot of people would have fled the Patreon. A part of me thought they would at the time. <clears throat> so here's Todd in the shadows comment on here. A question about your claim that the misinformation was simply stuff you had heard and had improperly fact-checked. You recite most of Richard Plant's The Pink Triangle in your video of the same name, but you... Uh, you say that the SS was becoming dominated by gay men while Plant claims the opposite. Do you remember your source for that? Similarly, in the history of gay adult film video, you passed off nearly the entirety of a Philadelphia magazine article about porn star Joey Stefano as your own words, but you added parts that contradict it, that he was seeking mainstream acting career, that his overdose was intentional. Do you remember when, where you heard that and why you felt to include it? Wow. So, Todd is going after... Additionally, I noticed you have unprivated your video about the Marvel Comics r characters Wicked and Hulkling. Uh, you have an entire section in there about how writers Alan Heinberg and later Brian Michael Bendis were not allowed to write gay characters, which contradicts all known statements about the topic of by Heinberg, Bendis, and others. Other sources in Marvel Comics, do you stand by those sections, or do you intend to leave them in the video? <laughs> Just getting after it, dude. Because I catastrophize, but I really don't think that would have happened. Even in the very beginning, when I was like, oh, I got to get as many videos as possible. Uh -huh. If I had said to those people who subscribed to the channel early on, you know, for the next video, I want to make sure that it's fully correct. And I want to make sure that, you know, it's as high quality as it can possibly be. I, I don't think anyone would have, you know, unsubscribed or not watched the next video because it didn't come out a couple of weeks after the algorithm decided that I was important for some reason. I convinced myself of these things, the but I don't think in hindsight, looking at it, I don't think any of that would have happened. And so there is no excuse for the misinformation. And there is certainly no excuse for the plagiarism. I fucked up bad i stole people's words and so you have to watch 37 minutes into this to get anywhere close to an apology and it's only after excuses thoughts and opinions that they worked incredibly hard writing and publishing and finding someone to publish their thoughts and opinions and research hard research that they had done and you know in some cases i put them their names in the opening credits which i thought was fine but like i said i've spoken with some of these people now and i understand why that was not okay because putting someone's name in the opening credits you know okay here's a list of people here's you know seven or eight people who are even if it was you know everyone even if it wasn't you know taking giant chunks of their work paragraphs at a time even if it was just a sentence here or there putting their name in the opening credits doesn't tell anyone where their work is in yeah, the video. Man. nobody can say oh i really liked that opinion or wow that's a really you know smart observation i want to read more from this person and then you know to find 
something you found interesting, you have to go play detective. And so, yes, just putting their name in the opening credits was wrong. I thought it was cool and, you know, cinematic, but it was wrong. Citations should have been done properly. There should never have been you can, just chunks of text you being can, put into videos. But, but that's not what you were doing. It's crazy that he's still trying to be like, well, I didn't know what I was doing. He cop He showed, like, we looked at the process. Copy and pasted wholesale sections of people's content and just mishmashed it together inside paragraphs. I don't know why he can't stop watching. Like, you could just see it. There were times, like with uh, the Queer History of Hollywood videos that I released this past spring, they were based directly on The Celluloid Closet by Vito Russo, the book, not the documentary. I expanded on it quite a bit, but it was based directly on Vito's work, and I credited him in the opening credits. And I thought it was okay to just do that because the book was out of print, and Vito had passed away, unfortunately, from age. The book was out of print, and he's dead. HIV complications due to HIV and AIDS, and I looked at it more as extending his legacy, making sure that people knew about the work that he did. But I don't think I ever mentioned his name in those videos. He was so. How could you possibly? You didn't think of it. No, you didn't say. Oh, I wanted to increase his legacy. You thought I could increase my fucking clout. You thought about it personally. Shut up. Just be honest, man. Like what? Just be honest. Yeah, I thought. I, I mean, I thought I could get away with it, man. That's it. It's obvious that you thought that. Was correct. Like I said. His name's in the opening credits, but I don't think I ever verbally mentioned his name. Someone who I have so it, much respect for. He's kind of an idol of mine. And you have to read this. I never mentioned his name. It wasn't because I didn't respect him or anything like that. And it also wasn't because I wanted people to think that it's this was... because I have ADHD and memory issues? All me. Again, if, if that was the case, I wouldn't have put his name in the, in the credits. I never wanted people to think that this was all me. So that's actually one of the videos I want to make. I want to make a documentary-style video talking about Vito Russo and his life and everything that he accomplished is he didn't just write the celluloid closet he did a lot more than that he's someone that people should know about obviously people can research him uh, there's books about him but i know you know it's easier to sit down and watch a 20 or 30 minute youtube video than it is to read a book i'd like to make a video about vito russo properly cited and not just you know copy paste it from a book i want to do the work i want to prove not just to you but to myself that i can do the work and that's why i've started making these documentaries working on these i can't mm -hmm. I can't really put into words how sorry I am. I tried. I tried writing like a blog entry to say that I was sorry for about two months now. And I just can't, I can't get across how sorry I am. Uh -huh. And I know actions speak way louder than words. And I hope with my actions that I can show you that I am sorry. I'm sorry to everyone I plagiarized. This, this end is highly edited. I'm sorry to everyone I've hurt. I'm sorry to people who feel lied to. I'm sorry to people who... Why is it so edited? In the... feel like I abused the queer community. It was never my intention. Again, I'm sorry to Jesse. There were actually several other YouTubers who uh, were very nice to me. But I feel like with everything that went down, Jesse, Jesse is the one that I should apologize to the most. I'm sorry for the people who felt scammed, who thought that Telos was a grift. It was not. It is not. I am very sorry. And I hope given time... And my actions proving it. That you can believe me. Hey chat, we should you guys wanna you guys wanna vote in a poll? Uh do you believe him? Do you? <laughs> you can peek out from behind it. Um <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't believe him, man. Uh it doesn't matter. James Summerton is cooked. The comments are crazy here. That's SMG Hottie, you had bet money on it. Wow. So, uh, started it out with, I'm gonna, I've self-harmed, my mom is dead, my dad is poor and illiterate, and, and Nick is just, man, uh, thrown under the bus. Uh, I, I don't understand how you think this is a good video. This will certain if this isn't deleted, just crazy. Insane that this wouldn't be deleted. Who, who likes this? Nobody liked this. <laughs> gotcha smg hottie um yeah i can't imagine you or anyone else will be seeing james summerton videos in the future like you think you're gonna go make fucking documentaries and we're gonna watch them hell no hell no i would there are two possible outcomes for the future of James Summerton. Different job, 
no longer doing f um, face forward YouTube videos. Uh, or um, grift, full on, I'm a right winger or a neoliberal or something. I have some kind of agenda. Uh, and here's what I'm pushing. Uh, there's just no fucking way that you can come back from this. Like, it's just not going to be profitable for you to do it. Go be an editor for someone who actually writes. Sure, go work. You can use your skills and whatever the fuck to go do someone else's work. But it's not for you, man. Uh, it's just not. This is just just bad in every way. I thought I saw a kitty, but it was just the arm of my chair. Damn. Uh, well, that's the that's the end of the James Summerton video. I mean, <laughs> can't can't imagine being like that, man. The man is cooked. He's cooked. <laughs>